yesterday we concluded the, first, the, the second part of the lecture by introducing the PD uh, control scheme. So, well, um, the, um, what we're going to see today is to uh, show the uh, control scheme, so the PD, the proportional derivative control scheme, advantages and disadvantages. And so why we need, for example, a PID control scheme, so with an addition of uh, an integrative, uh, an integrative uh, uh, control. Um, but in particular, we are going to discuss uh, how the reaction will work. So also we are going to, so the reason why we are introducing the PD and PID controller here is because the reaction wheel enables the use of this controller uh, in the linear time invariant system of the attitude uh, control scheme. Yesterday, I started to show you how the control scheme works. So don't be get confused, uh, got confused from um, the um, this scheme here, because pro probably, so what it is meant here are other two, uh, so are two independent schemes. So what we're going to see today and uh, is not really based on the feed for feed forward controller. So the feed forward controller, if you are going to uh, if you are going to attend uh, my course in space robotic systems, are used to uh, use directly the, the solid state uh, that you want, uh, for example, a specific attitude of the spacecraft to generate a control. What we are going to use here. It's not based on the feed forward controllers, but it is based on the uh, regulators or controllers that are going to use the error in order to generate a torque. So that's the reason why I would like to clarify that because we are not going to see feed forward the controller that in principle are less accurate because are less accurate. Because the feed forward controllers only use your desired position. So there is no feedback from your observation. Your observation are fundamental to know what is the current state, the current orientation of the spacecraft. So the, uh, if you don't have, for example, this uh, closed loop, uh, feed forward controllers uh, give you the possibility to uh, not use this uh, closing uh, loop here, but directly use the desired position to update the control, uh, control torque. What is the problem? Is that if your system is diverging, because you are not using the observation from the sensors, the control that you are applying by using directly the desired state will also be wrong, and so, that scheme is really uh, subject to uh, divergence. So what we in, in, in started to introduce yesterday are indeed a control scheme that are based on the error. So basically, what we need to do is to provide a control scheme that is directly proportional to the error in state uh, of the state and the error in the velocity. So the error is given by theta, for example, if you are lo looking at the pitch uh, dynamics, minus theta desired. E dot will be equal to theta dot, so the actual pitch rotation minus theta dot desired. So the first uh, um, first uh, uh, example that we are going to do is uh, by considering a disturbance. So for example, the pitch dynamics uh, during a, a spacecraft cruise. So when we don't have any gravity gradient, any additional disturbance, but only the disturbance given by the solar radiation pressure. For example, yesterday, 
we drew a spacecraft, so this is the solar panel, an asymmetric spacecraft uh, with the, this the pitch angle. And so these, uh, uh, so actually the rotation that is happening is on the other direction, but basically because of the offset of this area here, it's going to start a torque in that represent our disturbance d dashed. So we want to use a control scheme that balance this disturbance here. And we know that is a time invariant. So a possible solution, as I said, is a PD controller. PD controller is based on assuming a control torque that is as I said, directly proportional to the error. So it will be KPE, so it will be theta minus theta desired, minus KT, KD, sorry, theta dot minus theta desired, dot desired. If you substitute that in this equation here, and, your, and you, we assume that our desired pitch angle is equal to zero. And also we want to uh, reach a steel spacecraft. So our desired angular velocity has to be zero as well. We are going to converge to this equation here. We are going to face this problem by using two independent approach. So the first approach is based on the rod or width criterion. So it is a criterion that gives you uh, the uh, fundamental conditions to have a stable system. However, as we said yesterday, those conditions are not sufficient to demonstrate the stability, but are necessary. So uh, what you need to do is uh, to determine the characteristic equation, for example, by using the Laplace transform. So the stability of the system, as I always said, it is first estimated by considering the associated homogeneous equation. So you're using only this left side part. So you write the characteristic equation and it will be a second degree uh, algebraic equation. And you can see that the first two conditions needs to be uh, satisfied, that the need to be satisfied are that the all the coefficients of these characteristic equation has to be positive or at least the same sign. Um, and uh, the other important condition is that none of them has to be equal to zero. In this case, we know that none of them is equal to zero. And in order to satisfy the first condition, since the moment of inertia is positive by definition, we need to consider KD and KB positive. Once this condition is satisfied, we are able to build these matrix, this table that, as I said, the first two columns are the coefficients, so the even coefficients and the hot coefficients. And the third, sorry, and the third and four columns are uh, constructed by using the determinant of the submatrix given by the first, the previous two rows. For example, if you want to compute B1, you have to do the determinant of this matrix divided by A n minus one. So the negative value of this value here. There is a minus here. Same for B2, you need to do this one uh, this one uh, so B2, you have to be careful that B2 is this column and this column divided by A and minus one. And same rule for C. I mean, we are not going to provide many rows because as I said, uh, the main point here is that we have a second or maximum third degree uh, polynomial uh, equations. You can construct that even for more complicated problems. 
after that you have this table, in order to have stability, the conditions that you have to satisfy are that all the elements of the first column of that array has to be positive. So this column here has to provide all values positive. Okay, so let's take the equation that we want, and indeed is the equation given by the PD controller. So it will be lambda squared uh, multiplied by the moment of inertia, KD multiplied by lambda, and KP multiplied by one. The uh, table is pretty straightforward because the first row is given by the AN that here correspond to A2, and A2 is equal to the moment of inertia. A2 minus, uh, so AN minus two, corresponds to um, A1, A0. So A, our A0, so this is A2, A1, and this is A0. So you can see that here you have A2, here you have A0, and here you have A1. So the first row was pretty straightforward. The th third row, that it should be written because it is written up to S0 is given by the determinant. So this one times zero minus KP times, uh, uh, so if you do the determinant on this value, you have uh, KP times KD divided by minus KD. That's the reason why at the end uh, you have that our B1 here is exactly equal to KP. So the table exactly give, it, give us the uh, condition that KP and has to be greater than, than zero to have asymptotical stability because this criterion is necessary to have a, a negative a real part of the solution. As I said, it's only a necessary condition. So in order to have a more, uh, so in, an in-depth uh, resolution of the system, we can indeed consider uh, the uh, spring mass example with a damping. Uh, that basically, so this, uh, parallel example give you exactly the same criterion that you need to know uh, to select, for example, KP and KD, because so far I only said that it has to be positive in order to satisfy, in order to provide the necessary condition for stability. But we don't have any indica indication on how these values has to be. So in order to have a more uh, more information on that we have to study the system. That's the reason why here there is a quick look back to system stability of a second order degree um, polynom polynomial that actually is given by the, for example, a spring mass with a damping, uh, wind damping effect. So if you remember yesterday, I introduced you the reason why uh, we are able to provide this control uh, to the attitude. That for example, are not uh, cannot be applied for orbital termination because the attitude problem is indeed uh, is indeed written as a linear time invariant problem. So we can use the Laplace transform to define a certain transfer function. That, as I said yesterday, you know that the linear time invariant has a certain impulse response HT in the time domain that give you the, so if you have an input that in our case is our U, you have a certain Y of T that is given by the convolution of HT. So the reason why you go to the uh, frequency domain uh, using the Laplace transform is uh, because basically you are able to transform this one using the Laplace transform in a product. So you will have U of S a 
a transfer function hs that in our case here is called uh, g sorry to use different uh, uh, let me use the same if it works okay same letters give you ys so the interesting thing here is that you are able indeed to provide the us equal to y uh, sorry ys equal to gs times us and that's the reason why you're able to compute this transfer function here so if you apply the Laplace transform, this became, become indeed uh, an algebraic equation of second order. And you will have this uh, uh, equation here. And you can define the system natural frequency and the system damping ratio. So if you do that, uh, you are able to um, determine uh, the natural frequency of the system and also the damping effect. You know, for example, from this, from this relationship, uh, how to uh, select the values of B and uh, K in order to have a certain frequency response and certain damping effect. So if you do the analogy that we have seen so far in which you substitute b with kd and k with kd and your m is your moment of inertia you can understand that what it is true for this system it also true for the pd controller okay let me know if you have questions interrupt me in order to be on the same page but that should be pretty straightforward so here we're going to do similar similar approach that we have seen for the gravity gradient but even here is even simpler than that because we know that the root of that uh, equation uh, that represents our solution are given by are given by the product of the natural frequency and the damping effect and the first condition that we found in order to have uh, a negative uh, so basically in order to have uh, um, in order to have uh, solutions that provide a, uh, a negative real part is that the damping effect has to be greater than zero okay the other condition that we are going to demonstrate uh, by using this approach is that we are going to see also that if C is between zero and one, all the roots are complex conjugates. And so we are able to dump uh, the, uh, a certain oscillation effect because of uh, uh, an external disturbance or because we are far from our desired position, the equilibrium position, and the system is going back. If we have that C is greater than one, we are going to have an overdamped case. So let's see in detail how we are able to provide these conclusions. So let's go back to our system in the Laplace transform. So we know that S has to be greater than zero. And so we can uh, determine that our uh, uh, solutions are given by two roots, S1 and S2. So if we write the solutions in the time domain, as we have seen for the gravity gradient, the solutions are given by the mode of the system and so the difference and so the, uh, the sum of the exponential term of the two S1 and S2 that we have seen here. So these two roots are indeed uh, the exponential part of this exponential curve. And from here, we can, uh, so 
if you do the uh, basically the anti Laplace transform, uh, you are able to find that this uh, combination of the two exponential curves give you the response of your system. So as I said, if x is between zero and one, the roots are complex conjugates, and we we can we we end up with uh, this uh, familiar form. So basically, since uh, c is uh, between zero and one, you have that inside the square root, uh, you have an imaginary number. And so if you explicit the exponential term by using the cosine sine term, or especially so the uh, real and uh, the imaginary, imaginary part of the two roots, uh, you end up with this response here. So this uh, uh, view of the problem is, uh, has already been seen in other, uh, in other courses, but is uh, exactly the same of what happens with your KP, so your PD controller. So you, the problem that we have uh, introduced now is by considering that the disturbance is zero. If you consider that there is a disturbance, for example, uh, uh, a constant disturbance, a, a, a disturbance uh, that basically in the Laplace domain is uh, one over S, if it is a step function in the in the time domain. So if we do so, we can demonstrate, although we're not going to do that in this course as, uh, uh, I mean, it is a part of a previous, uh, uh, previous knowledge, you can demonstrate that this solution here is a bit more complicated, but is given by always uh, a sum of two, uh, so a cosine and a sine term, multiplied by an exponential. So you can see from here that basically the response of the system by using a disturbance uh, term that is a step function over time, that your system that before at infinite time, if x is greater than zero is converging to zero, in this case, when you have a, a constant disturbance uh, for infinite, so for t that is uh, greater than infinite, so it uh, uh, tends to infinite, uh, ba basically what you're getting is that your y, uh, the, your response is going to converge to one over m, the natural frequency of the system. This is an important uh, uh, response, an important solution, because it is true for this uh, simple system, but it's also true for PD controller. So what we have seen here is that, uh, by using the Laplace transform, is that your system, if you have a constant disturbance and you have, uh, you're only applying a PD controller, it is, con it is going to converge to a value that is not zero. So you will not be your desired state. Another important thing that you can see from the plot of this solution is that by changing your C and omega n, so your k, the rigidity of the system, you're going to change also the response of the system to a specific disturbance. You know that if C is equal to one, you're going to converge to the critical damping. So basically you don't have any oscillation effect before the convergence. If it is going to be uh, larger than one, so for example, 1.2, you see that you don't have oscillation, oscillation, but you are converging with uh, approaching the, the value that you want uh, with uh, a time that is larger. So usually critical damping is suggested because basically provides the, the um, 
a sort of uh, low, uh, so you, you are not going to solicit the system uh, to a specific oscillation. If you have uh, uh, C that is lower than, than one, uh, you are going to overshooting that because basically you're going to start uh, having oscillation around the desired position. And uh, uh, you, you can measure, for example, your rise time. So the time at which you are reaching that position. So of course, uh, by using C greater than one, you're going to reach your desired position at shorter times, but not with the stability yet. The problem for the PD controller is even simpler than that, because basically our goal here, our response, our Y is indeed the theta. So the Y that you have seen before is our theta. And there is a theorem that it is very useful here that can provide uh, information on the final convergence of, of the system just uh, from the beginning. So if we know that for the pitch dynamics we have uh, y theta dot dot plus k d theta dot plus k p theta And this is a constant disturbance. So we are going to look at that problem uh, at, uh, t uh, I mean, time scales uh, at the um, in the time domain. For the final value theorem, that means that for t that tend to the infinite, you have a steady state convergence in which you have the theta dot dot and theta dot if the condition for the stability of the system are satisfied, and so we have seen that kt and kp has to be positive, this system is going to converge to theta infinite equal to the disturbance divided by kp. So this is the problem seen from different perspective, but basically it's the same problem that you have seen for a spring mass case by using a dumping effect. So the problem here is that we, know, we don't still have indication of KP and KD. We have seen that, for example, we can assume a critical dumping. So we have seen that omega n of the system in our case, it will be equal to the square root of the kp divided by the moment of inertia. And c is b, so our kd, divided by 2m omega n. So it will be c kd times, uh, uh, so divide by two moment of inertia times omega n. So if you explicit the uh, frequency, the frequency, normal frequency, you can see that C, if that has to be equal to one, uh, you have that KD divided by these two terms. Uh, so we'll have basically two moment of inertia times, uh, K P uh, moment of inertia. So you can find uh, um, the uh, the possible response of the system. So a relationship between K P and K D in order to have uh over uh, so the critical dumping of the system so for example you can choose a kp and kd so actually so the in order to show to, to choose a kp and kd in order to determine the uh, relationship between these two coefficients that give you critical dumping so you you see that uh, you have a relationship uh, that optimizes uh, your response. And there are uh, different things that you have to take into account. So if you want to reduce uh, 
the, convert the error in your final estimation because remember that our goal here was that theta desired is equal to zero. But actually, the system with this control is converging to theta infinity equal to the disturbance divided by kp. So one can say, okay, I, let's use a very, very large kp, for example. So kp greater than zero. Well, you can see that if you have a kp greater than zero, also the normal frequency of the system will be greater than zero. So you have to be careful that the, your system is not going to affect, so also that will be very large. This effect will affect significantly your response of the system. So for example, you can approach the frequency, the natural frequency of your satellite. So you can go to, you can approach the resonance of the system and that could be very risky for the stability of the, I mean, for the structure stability of your system. The other thing that you have to take into account is that if you want to have a KP very, very large and you want critical dumping, so for example, C1 equal to one, you can see that also KD will be very, very large. And you have to be careful that uh, if uh, you have a KP and KD very large, we know that the control torque that we are applying is proportional to the error. So it means uh, that even for small errors, you are going to apply huge torques. And if you're applying huge torques, uh, you have to be careful that your system is able to provide those huge torques. Because I mean, you are not, for example, if we're going to use uh, the reaction wheels, uh, you have to be careful that you have enough power or enough, uh, uh, yes, let's say enough power to generate this torque. So that's the reason why the, uh, the selection of KP and KD is very important. And from here, you can understand that the PD controller is not adequate to uh, control a system affected by a constant disturbance. So you need to find a second way in order to uh, compensate the constant disturbances. And one possibility that is used is the proportional integral derivative system. So the, this uh, control scheme is only an extension. And as I said before, so the controller is directly given by the error. So your uh, control torque is uh, given by the error measurement that uh, you are getting from your sensors, okay? The additional term is an integral of the error over time. That indeed is important in order to provide, in order to uh, remove the residual uh, so basically to remove the error that you have for PD controllers. But before demonstrate that, we need to find the same with using the same approach, how that control scheme provide a stable system. So let's reuse, for example, the uh, Rautorvitz criterion. So before going uh, in that direction, we need to take the, uh, uh, control schema, uh, so the MCY, so the control uh, uh, torque will be indeed equal to minus KD theta dot minus KP theta minus KI theta, so the integral of theta. So here we are always assuming that theta desired is equal to theta dot desired that is equal to zero. We write this equation in this form. 
And in order to study stability, now you can have the problem, oh, okay, how we can, we can indeed study the stability of the system if we have an integral here? Well, since the disturbance is a constant over time, you can derive, you, you can do the derivative over time of the equation. So basically, since you know that d dot is equal to zero, you are able to determine the system by having the derivative over time of e y theta three dot plus k d theta dot dot plus k t theta dot plus k i theta. So now we have uh, a polynomial, so energetic equations. Uh, if we transform uh, through the Laplace transform of the third uh, degree. So what we can see here is that we need to do exactly the same of what we have seen for the PD controller. So the, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, three coefficients. So we have a2, a3, a2, a1, and a0. So the table is similar to what we had before, but here we have an extra term that is given by ki. So the expression of bi now is a bit different. So bi, oh sorry, b1 is equal to the, uh, so we know that is minus the moment of, you know, so minus the determinant of this uh, submatrix here, divided by kd. So it will be indeed i y, the cost, the integral term minus kp, kd. And this is the relationship that you have here. So we know that this column, in order to have the necessary condition for stability, has to be positive. So the moment of inertia, it is by definition. We already knew that KD has to be positive from the PD controller. Now we will have a condition that ties the proportional gain to the integral gain. So we need to demonstrate that P1 is greater than zero. And uh, we already knew that, that I forgot to say that before doing this table, you have to demonstrate that all coefficients are not equal to zero and that have the same sign. So you already know that KD, KP and KI has to be positive before doing the matrix here in order to have stability using the rotor width criterion. So B1, has to be greater than zero and means that um, so if you uh, so we know that kd is greater than zero so we can directly use the numerator part here and you're going to have uh, indeed that you have a relationship between kd so your derivative uh, gain time, so this is equal to the moment of inertia and the ki divided by kp. Sorry, I see it in the opposite way. But anyway, kp, so as I said, you have a relationship between the proportional gain and the other two. So, this is important because when you choose your coefficients, you have to be careful that all those coefficients has to be greater than zero, but especially kp has to be greater than these values here in order to have stability. But as I said, to conclude this part before we are going to the actual wheel in the next hour, you need to have that the moment of inertia, so you know that the moment of inertia three dot dot plus kd uh, theta dot dot plus kp theta dot plus ki theta is equal to zero because we know that the derivative over time is equal to zero. 
So for the uh, final value theorem, we can now demonstrate that for uh, t that tends to infinite, the first three terms are equal to zero and theta infinite is equal to zero. So what you have seen so far, we have conditions of the coefficients to have the possibility to have an asymptotical stable control system. And the other, uh, the other condition uh, and this uh, schema uh, after converge is going indeed uh, to converge uh, to an error to uh, equal to zero. So since our theta design is equal to zero, we are going to address to fulfill our initial goal. So in the next hour, we're going to see that these control schemes are well suited to control the satellites using reaction wheels, because reaction wheels enables a continuous control of the system of the spacecraft attitude by changing continuously the velocity of the of the wheel, so transferring a torque to the wheel and the counter reaction of that torque it is transferred on the satellite so by accelerating the wheel we are going to generate an angular momentum that is transferred to the satellite and since we are able to accelerate the wheel continuously we are able to apply the uh, continuous control scheme pd and pid by using this device Okay, so let's have a break here and we have time for questions. Show you, I mean, I'm able to show you some uh, um, MATLAB results. Also, to, that will be helpful to better understand what we are saying. Okay, so we, after the introduction, uh, of the proportional uh, de uh, derivative and the proportional integral derivative control scheme, we have to use that control scheme now for real actuators. As I said, this kind of control scheme are not adequate for um, maneuvers, uh, for example, for the thrusters in which you have impulsive maneuvers and we have seen uh, the bank bank strategy. But in principle, you can use PD and PID controllers using magneto torquers, torque roads, and also, and especially the momentum exchange devices, so the reaction wheels. The reason why is mainly given by the property of those devices. So let's do uh, an example that probably could be helpful. So you know that you have the spire, so this is a magnetic coil in which you indeed vary your current in order to determine the magnetic moment. So you know the current, so the magnetic moment that gives you the torque. So by doing the cross product of that with the uh, magnetic magnetic field, so those are the torque roads. If you change the current, the intensity of the current in the spire, in the coil, you are able to change the magnetic moment and so increase the torque relatively to the magnetic field of the planet. So you are able to change the current continuously. So you're able indeed to provide the fine variation of the current in order to change your magnetic moment. That's the reason why PD controller, PD PID controller can be done with the magnetic uh, devices. The other device that we are going to see now is, so let's assume that you are looking at, you, at your satellite, so your bus that can be represented with a box, and your wheel is parallel to this plane. 
So it means that this point represents your vertical axis of the wheel, that is a rotor that can rotate along this axis. And you are going to indeed create a velocity to generate a velocity, so accelerate the rotor of the reaction wheel in order to generate a counter reaction on the satellite, a torque, a control torque that will be indeed opposite to the velocity because you're accelerating the wheel in this direction and the control reaction is going to be opposite. So it means that if you have a disturbance D, you're going constant here, you're going to accelerate your wheel. So this is omega wheel in the same direction of the disturbance because you want to increase to provide the torque that is going to be opposite of the disturbance. So that's the reason why are called exchange, uh, sorry, reaction wheels because we are going to provide this torque as a reaction of the acceleration of the wheel. The analogy with the magnetic torque rose is indeed that when you accelerate this wheel, you're going to use as an input the current. So you are going to change the current in the wheel in order to accelerate the uh, this device. That's the reason why these two devices are well suited for continuous control scheme as PID and PD. So that's the reason why the, uh, we are we're going to see that using that control scheme we are able to, uh, so using the reaction wheel we are able to use those control schemes. The main uh, property of uh, the reaction wheel, as I said, is that compared to thrusters and to magnetic torque roads and also, um, for example, uh, also the uh, yeah the solar wind sails, is to uh, not generate a, a torque directly on the spacecraft uh, by changing the entire angular momentum of the system. So for the reaction, for example, for the thrusters and the other devices, as I said, you have that the system angular momentum is equal to the angular momentum of the satellite. So this is HS of the satellite. When you add a reaction wheel, the angular momentum of the entire system is the angular momentum of the satellite plus the angular momentum of the wheel. So you don't have a variation of the angular momentum of the satellite that is going to change the angular momentum of the system itself. But you're going to generate an angular momentum variation of the wheel that is going to be transferred to the angular momentum of the satellite. And so the angular momentum of the system will be conserved. So it means that since you are generating a torque on the wheel and the same torque with opposite sign is going to be acted on the spacecraft, the angular momentum of the system is, being, is going to be conserved. So you have the conservation of angular momentum something that is not true for the other system in which you have that for example by firing thruster you're going to change the angular momentum of the satellite that corresponds to the angular momentum of the system this represents uh, of course a main advantage because uh, you are able to uh, generate a, a torque directly by varying the velocity of the wheel itself. So without, for example, external torque uh, from this to the satellite that can provide a strong vibration on the structure. The main disadvantage, however, is that you are not able to accelerate a wheel indefinitely. So you know that there is a maximum 
angular velocity of the wheel, so omega wheel maximum, that you can reach. Because as I said, if you, let, let's assume that you have a constant disturbance. The constant disturbance will require a constant torque that is going to opposite this constant disturbance. So it means that you need to accelerate, the uniform, uh, uniformly accelerate the wheel. And so this uniform acceleration is going to accelerate the wheel with an omega dot that is probably, uh, so it will basically converge to a value uh, that will approach indeed the structural limit of the wheel. So let's see what are the weaknesses of this system. Because of course, uh, there is a main advantage that you can provide continuous, var continuous variation of the attitude of the spacecraft, uh, but there are some structural limits of the wheel itself. Anyway, the main remark of this slide is indeed uh, that the angular momentum of the system with uh, a reaction wheel is going to be conserved. So you are, you are going to have that the what is it, it is generated to the wheel, it is transferred to the satellite. So the property of the wheel that enables um, the um, modeling, um, so the use of the wheel with the PD and PID controller is because as I said, as for the magnetic coils, the magnetic torque rods, your input will be a current. So basically you have an intensity current that will be generated into the stator of the wheel in order to accelerate a rotor that is going to be, uh, that, is, um, that is going to rotate uh, along these vertical axes. What it means here is that you can easily understand that the acceleration of the wheel will be directly proportional to the intensity of the current of the current that is given to the motor. So the wheel itself it is modeled as a direct current motor. Okay. So you are providing an input current to the system in order to accelerate the, system, the, the rotor itself. So if you want to accelerate the motor, you have to increase the current. If you have a constant current, that constant current will provide a constant torque. If you want to provide an, incre in, uh, an increase in your control torque, you need to increase the current. That's the reason why this, there is this important relationship between the control torque that you have to generate and the current of the system through a, through a coefficient that here is called the Km and it is the characteristic coefficients of the motor. So when you have, for example, to design the control scheme of your satellite, you know that the reaction wheel that you're going to use have a specific characteristic coefficient that is given by the electronics of the system, for example. The other important property that you have to take into account is the voltage, because you have to be careful that when you have DC motors, and especially, I mean, DC motors that are useful for control, uh, for the control of the spacecraft attitude, is indeed the uh, power. So you will need uh, to compute the power that is required to uh, determine a certain torque on the system. And it, it, it can be easily uh, seen that your voltage, it is equal to the resistance in the wheel that you have in the wheel. So the resistance is uh, an electrical property of the circuit of the of the wheel itself times the current the input current so larger is the current the larger is the torque but also larger is the voltage 
of the of the will and so we are going to see that larger will be the power that you need this uh, additional term um, is basically based on the fact that when you have that your current is equal to zero to maintain the wheel so if the wheel is rotating with the fixed uh, spin rate so we are not you're not providing additional current because you don't need to um, you don't need to provide uh, a torque for example but uh, you also need to avoid to the spin the wheel because if the wheel is going to the spin because uh, uh, it's going to the spin that would create an undesired torque so that's the reason why you need to keep a voltage to maintain the wheel at the, of the uh, of the wheel velocity so let's assume that you have uh, um, the wheel of uh, the velocity omega wheel of uh, of your uh, reaction uh, of your reaction wheel and uh, so let's do it in the other way so you have uh, over time so you want to represent the omega wheel over time so you are accelerating your wheel initially from zero to a certain value because basically here you accelerated the wheel in order to balance a, a disturbance. So let's assume that in the, during this period from T0 and T1, you had a disturbance that the wheel had to counter-react. Well, that acceleration generated, that was generated through a current created a torque in order to balance the disturbance. After T1, assume that the disturbance now is not acting anymore, but you can't have that the, the, the wheel, for example, is not going to rotate at that velocity. So you need to keep the wheel at that velocity because otherwise the, the spinning of the wheel we create, would create a negative torque that is going to affect the attitude of the spacecraft. So the origin of this additional term here is to keep the wheel at the previous spin rate in order to avoid the spinning. As I said, the importance here is to the, the important task that we need to find here is to determine the power of the wheel. So you would need to determine the uh, voltage times the current. Since the voltage, as we have seen, it is given by this uh, uh, expression. So it is, of course, uh, the resistance times the current plus the additional term to avoid the, the spinning of the wheel. And also this term is known because it represents the characteristic of the wheel. So usually when you have a wheel, it is always like when you want to com com uh, buy a motor for a car or another, uh, application. So you have the characteristic of the motor that you have to take into account. So those uh, term is, is, is known and you multiply the voltage to the current in order to determine the power that you need to determine uh, that specific uh, variation of the wheel. Here uh, you can find an additional slide that I'm not going to go in detail. But you have to uh, be careful that uh, DC motors usually not only have, so the voltage, voltage term, not only have the two terms that I described before, there is also an inductance that um, basically provides an additional term is you have that the current is varying over time. For our application, we can neglect this term because the inductance is, is considered small compared to the other terms. Okay, that's the reason why in the previous slides that it is equal to zero. Here, it is also another uh, complicated expression of the, uh, of the wheel itself. 
So in the previous, uh, so this one, uh, that will be indeed uh, the minus the control, uh, the control that you are going to provide to the to the to the satellite. It is given. It is equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel times the wheel velocity, angular velocity. So you need to consider that the control that you are going to apply on the system, on the satellite, has an opposite direction in the dynamical equation of the wheel. So you have to consider and integrate the dynamical equation of the wheel, of course. You have to be careful, indeed, that the control that you are going to apply to the spacecraft is going to provide an opposite torque in the acceleration of the wheel. So what you can find here is indeed what I said. So the first term was already presented. The other additional two terms that are true for realistic wheels is the dumping effect of the wheel if you have a certain viscosity in the contact between the rotor and the stator. And also you have additional load, undesired load, that can also be given by, for example, uh, uh, the presence of magnetic fields or other uh, electronic, uh, electronic disturbances. So in our case, we are excluding dumping effect of the wheel and uh, additional uh, external load, okay? So here it seems to be a very complicated uh, representation, but, but what you need to be, uh, what you need to do, as I said, let's assume that we need to control the, uh, uh, okay, let's assume that we need to control the U axis of the spacecraft. So you will have to control E psi dot dot that is equal to uh, basically a disturbance. And you want to apply a control. So our MCY. As I said, in order to generate the MCY, you need to integrate the equation of the wheel itself in order to determine how the power and uh, of the wheel is going to vary. So you need to compute IW omega wheel dot that is equal to minus the control torque that is applied to the to the to the wheel to the to the satellite. So you need to compute both equations. You need to count both equations because from this one you are able to determine the power that you need from the wheel. And, so you, and also, and especially, you need to compare to determine the omega max. So you need to check if that applying that control, your wheel is not going to reach the maximum value of the angular velocity. Yeah. So this is what we are going to do next. What you can see from this slide here is that, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, angular momentum of the saddle of the, of the entire system uh, that here is called uh, J0 is equal to the angular momentum of uh, the spacecraft in uh, the Z direction because we are considering, uh, for example, the um, your axis plus the moment of inertia of the wheel times the uh, omega wheel. So you can determine that E z omega z, and you can uh, that the second term uh, can be written as the moment of inertia of the wheel uh, times the angular velocity of the wheel of the of the z-axis plus 
omega will minus omega z. So we are, what we are doing here, we are summing and subtracting the same quantity in this second term here. Why we, we need to do that? Because what we want to demonstrate is that, sorry, is that basically this j0 is given by, um, sorry, this was, dot so basically this quantity here is called the omega big omega in which big omega of the wheel is the relative velocity of the wheel with respect to the uh, to the angular velocity of the spacecraft so it's the relative velocity the small the lowercase omega here are the angular velocity are the angular velocity of uh, in the inner, uh, with respect to the inertial reference frame so since we know that uh, h dot is equal to zero we can directly um, write that e uh, z omega dot and so psi dot dot is equal to this second term that is equal to minus i omega i doppia i w times omega dot so c dot dot plus omega w so the relative velocity of the wheel with respect to so from this expression here to this one is pretty straightforward so you take this term and you put on the left side and you have that the sum of the moment of inertia times the angular velocity the angular uh, velocity of the spacecraft uh, the angular acceleration of the spacecraft is equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel times the variation, the angular variation of the wheel with respect to the uh, spacecraft itself. And this one, since uh, this one is exactly the torque that we are going to apply. Okay. So you have to be careful that in this formulation that I've written here, uh, you have to be careful that actually you don't have. So the, um, this torque here is indeed associated to the angular variation of the spacecraft wheel speed, speed, with respect to the angular velocity of the wheel with respect with respect to the spacecraft itself so this uh, torque here is uh, indeed related to the angular velocity of the spacecraft and so that's the reason why you can see that uh, the torque that is applied to the wheel is opposite in sign to the torque that is applied to the um, to the uh, to the spacecraft so if you assume for example that the moment of inertia of the wheel is very small compared to the moment of inertia of the satellite uh, these uh, will be exactly the equation that you have and also if you assume that omega will is greater than omega z you can go back sorry if i do that but you can go back to this one because usually the angular velocity of the wheel is very, very large compared to the angular velocity of the spacecraft. And the moment of inertia of the wheel is very low compared to the moment of inertia of the satellite. Okay, so now we are able to use the equation of the wheel 
and uh, the control scheme that we have seen so far. So let's go back uh, to the pitch uh, uh, problem that we have seen before. So before we have seen uh, that we, we wanted to use a control scheme based on the proportional derivative scheme. There is an error here, let me correct that. So the, we are assuming always that it is a theta desired and, uh, and also this one, okay, there, are, there is a double error here. Okay, so if we apply the control scheme PD here, we have to be careful that our control scheme that we are going to apply is going to affect our angular velocity variation of the wheel. So basically, you can see that by applying this control scheme here, this will, is going to affect the angular velocity of the wheel itself. We have seen that uh, the steady state, so for to infinite time, uh, we're going to converge it to the disturbance divided by Kp. And we have to be careful that by converging to the disturbance, also our control, uh, control uh, uh, torque is going to converge to a fixed value because at t, at, at, uh, t uh, infinite, so infinite time, also our control is going to converge to kp at the infinite. So in order to provide this control scheme, the will is to provide a constant torque with this magnitude. It means that the angular uh, momentum of the will is going to increase linearly over time because we know that J, or before we call the HW, um, from here we have that HW dot is equal to MC. So if we integrate that, we have that H, H, HW, so the angular momentum of the wheel, will be equal to HW0 plus the disturbance, because Kp theta infinite is equal to the disturbance itself, times T time. So at a certain time, we are going to, so the angular momentum of the wheel is going to uh, increase linearly over time. And so since we know that omega wheel, the angular momentum of the wheel is equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel times omega wheel, this is increased over time. And we are going to reach at the time when omega wheel is going to approach our will be equal to omega will maximum. As I said, it is a problem called the saturation of the wheels. So from these equations, we can compute when indeed we're going to saturate, because if we substitute the omega maximum to the angular momentum that now here is called C, and sorry if there are different uh, nomenclatures, but it is our W maximum. This one is going to convert, is basically give us this relationship here. And so since uh, this is uh, a value that we know, because we know the moment of inertia of the wheel, but they will also know the spin rate maximum of the wheel, we are able, to, sorry, I don't know what, Okay, what we are able to do is to determine the time at which our wheel is going to approach our omega maximum. So the time at which we are going to saturate. So let's see how, the, how does that occur. So if we have a constant disturbance, we are applying a PD controller, 
our wheel is going to indeed approach a maximum value of the angular velocity. So basically starting from a certain uh, h w zero, the now is gamma, sorry about that, mm -hmm. is going to approach a C maximum, that is our h w maximum, that is equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel times the angular velocity of the wheel. Okay. When we are going to approach this one, the wheel cannot be accelerated even further. We are not going to have omega wheel larger than omega maximum. So that is not possible. And so here we need to do a desaturation maneuver. This duration maneuver can be done in two ways. So using thrusters or magnetic coils, magnetic coils, magnetic torque rods. So the approach is pretty straightforward. Let's assume the thrusters before the other part. So the, if we have thrusters, we can indeed fire the thrusters in a way to desaturate the, uh, the uh, the, the spacecraft. So what we need to do is that since the wheel is accelerating in this direction, as I said, with the same direction of the disturbance, we need to generate a desaturation torque that will be opposite to the disturbance and larger in order that the wheel is going to provide an opposite angular velocity omega will uh, during the saturation that is going to decelerate the will and bring back the angular velocity to zero. So in our equations that we have seen before, we need to have an additional term that is given, for example, by the thrusters. But our expression of the control scheme for the will is exactly the same and sorry if there is still an error here. But as I said here, this control scheme is going to counterreact the desaturation control torque that is given by the thrusters. So we are using the thrusters to include, to basically generate a disturbance opposite, opposite disturbance in order to use our control scheme in our will to desaturate. Well, from here, you can determine that what you're going to have is that your, uh, by using a control a proportional derivative scheme, your uh, spacecraft uh, after the desaturation maneuver is going to converge to a bias attitude that is given by d minus uh, the control uh, the, uh, the control torque desaturation divided by kp. So basically, it's the same thing that we have seen so far. Since that this term here and this term here tends to zero, you're going to have d plus minus kp theta you're going to have uh, for uh, t tending to infinite uh, that basically theta infinite kp is equal to the disturbance mi minus the torque given by the saturation maneuver and so that's the reason why here you have this value here. And so you can demonstrate that if the desaturation maneuver is indeed going to provide a disturbance larger to the disturbance itself with opposite sign, you're going to provide an angular variation, angular momentum variation of the wheel negative. 
So you are going to indeed spin your wheels. So since we have only seven minutes left, I will leave you with uh, just a couple of examples for the wheel. And as I said, uh, we are not able to, uh, to do the uh, 3D configuration of the wheels. But it's important here to understand how, for example, single wheel works. So there are a few examples that you can find in these slides in which not only you have, uh, you can use your reaction wheel, for example, in a realistic scenario as in orbit around, uh, around the Earth. And so you have a gravity gradient on top the control scheme. You can see that now the, uh, the control is going to affect, uh, basically you have the stability of the system is a combination of KP and the moment of inertia of the spacecraft. But since we are ignoring any disturbances, you can easily demonstrate that in this case, even with the gravity gradient, the reaction wheel is going to basically dump the uh, oscillation due to the gravity gradient, bringing our spacecraft to a theta infinite equal to zero. This is a, a straightforward example. In order to have, uh, for example, an idea on the uh, development of KP and KD, you can see uh, that, for example, for different moment of inertia of the spacecraft uh, in a geostationary uh, satellite uh, with an omega zero equal to uh, to this one, this ten to minus five, I guess. Um, you are able to have uh, different variations uh, of uh, the response of the system by changing KP and KD and KP. So for example, by increasing KD, you are able to have a larger response, a, a faster response to the system. But as you can see, this not represents our uh, critical dumping since we have an overshooting. So here uh, you, you can indeed, for example, also use uh, the uh, equations uh, of the wheel in order to determine uh, the saturation of the wheel uh, when you have a gravity gradient. But as I said, this is only an example that is not really important. So uh, I would skip this. Um, yeah, the only addition compared to what we have seen before is that here you have an additional term that, as I said, is a minus mc. And you are able to uh, not only integrate the equation of your uh, satellite dynamics, but you are also able to integrate the equation of the wheel. And uh, here are a few examples uh, that can explain a little bit better what I, I have said, uh, but in principle, uh, you can see uh, that you're going to converge to a certain angular velocity of the wheel. And so you have to be careful uh, that your uh, design of KP and KD are going to change, are going to change the response of the system, but also the input power and current that you are going to provide to the system itself. So we have seen uh, uh, the desaturation by using thruster, by using impulsive torques with M desire, M desaturation. But uh, since we have only three minutes left, uh, I would like to conclude uh, with uh, uh, just uh, um, two considerations. So, so um, you are also able to use, for example, magneto torque roads in order to desaturate the wheels. Uh, the desaturation of the wheels comes from the fact that you want to generate a control, um, a control torque that is going to, uh, as we said, um, provide uh, a, a torque opposite to the disturbance in order to the spin the 
um, the wheels. So you know this TC, and you can co compute uh, by using the approach that we have seen before, what is the magnetic moment that you need in order to generate this uh, control. Uh, so in order to generate uh, the uh, torque that you need to desaturate the wheels. As I said, this is only for your knowledge. It's not really required. Uh, so the main point here is that, in principle, uh, you can use uh, the desaturation control torque that you need as your disturbance, and so try to solve the uh, magnetotorque problem by considering this input here. As I said, it's not it's possible that the magneto torques are not able to desaturate fully desaturate the wheels because uh, because of the uh, you need to provide a torque that uh, is not parallel to the magnetic field of the of the planet so the final slide that you can find is another important combination of the magneto torque rods and the reaction wheels so as we said before, if we want to control the roll and the pitch and the axis of, uh, of, the, of the spacecraft, you can use uh, the magneto torque roads uh, and you are going to use only the uh, magnetic moment Mx and Mz. But as we have seen, uh, these magnet magneto torque roads uh, provide a possible uh, error in the pitch direction. So you can use, for example, a wheel in the pitch direction to remove the error given by the magneto torque roads. So let me show you briefly what I have done, what we have seen for the um, for the magneto torque roads. So in the previous uh, case, uh, we have seen that if you have magnetic torque roads and you want to dump the, uh, for example, the uh, errors in the yo axis, uh, you have uh, this uh, behavior here. But uh, since uh, the magnetic moment along Bx, uh, sorry, along, so Mx will also provide an additional error in the pitch axis, we can use a reaction wheel along this axis in order to remove the signal. So what I have done here is to apply an additional control in the pitch direction with a control scheme with a certain KP and KD. What you can see is that if you apply a reaction wheel in the pitch direction, you are able to indeed not have the oscillation between zero, 0 and 20 degrees, but this reaction, wheels, reaction wheel is going to provide, uh, to dump the effect given by the undesired oscillation uh, the, uh, given by the magnetic moment. And so you can use the reaction wheel so uh, if you look at the dynamical equations, what I have added is a control KD and KP on the Y direction that provide the critical damping. So as we have seen before, the critical damping is given by the fact that KD is, should be equal to 2 times the square root of the moment of inertia of the y direction and kp. Anyway, so since we are uh, uh, late, uh, those uh, we are uh, the final uh, goals of our course. So there are also a few slides for your uh, curiosity on how to distribute uh, the reaction wheels uh, uh, in three dimension in order to optimize uh, the distribution of the angular moment. But the main point that we have seen today is indeed how to apply a reaction wheel, uh, a PD, a PID controller with reaction wheels. And also how to combine, for example, reaction wheel with other devices. So you need thrusters to desaturate the delta Vs. And also you need, for example, magneto torque rods to do the same task. 
So let me know when we are going to have the uh, the next uh, um, 